We're at the funeral house. And we got the bad news that we're not allowed to get inside. Only 10 people. The government law. They are free to go in markets, Costco and everywhere, in huge number of hundreds, but not in here. Are you afraid of the government or are you afraid of God? Who do you obey? Who do you submit to? People have to see, people have to understand. The first time of Christians, they will not submit to the government, but to God alone. So take a stand. Don't let the government intimidate you and to stop you. We have the power in the name of Jesus, greater than the government, greater than authorities. Peter said, you'll be the judge if we should listen to you or to God. Who do you listen to? Who do you obey? We are obeying God. People should not be afraid of coronavirus, but of sin, because wages Amen. of sin is death. You can die any moment. Are you ready? Are you prepared to see the Lord? This is the funeral house. Maybe they are afraid that the dead will rise. Or the government will wake up. It's not the fear of coronavirus, it's the fear of death. But Jesus took the sting of death. And if you believe in him, you shall not die. He who has the son has eternal life. Hallelujah. Came here, but they stop us to get inside. But we do church outside. And that's about time for the church to get outside and proclaim the good news of Jesus. If you are not allowed to go inside, get outside. Jesus said, go all over the world and preach the gospel. Church has to wake up and go all over, out of the buildings and proclaim Jesus. Hallelujah. We received the news from the government that we are not allowed in the funeral house. Just 10 people only. So we are going in this garden to preach the gospel outside. If the government is forbidding us inside, we go outside. I think it's the calling of Jesus who's telling us to go into the world. It's time to get out from between the walls, among the walls, and preach and be obedient to the calling. In the hospital, I had the privilege to pray for her. And somehow, the Spirit of God was just, while I was praying, He told me, I'm going to take her home. And I knew she's going to be home with the Lord. So uh, I was thinking, uh, coming this way, Lord, uh, what do you want to share with the people there? And by the way, I'm telling you, I'm an outsider preacher. I love preaching outside. Many churches are getting me out of the church, <laughs> but many churches want me inside of the church. But I believe what happened today, it's what Jesus meant when he said, go into the world. Amen. Get out of the walls and preach to the lost and dying and the panicking Amen. people Amen. of coronavirus. Amen. People are not panicking for coronavirus. They are panicking of death. That's, right. yeah. That's why they're, they're afraid of death. And uh, today the message is, are you? Do you live in sin? Because you are dead to sin or you are dead in sin. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, you were dead in your sins and transgressions. You were dead until you found Jesus. Amen. And I want to read what Jesus said to the Pharisees, to the priests, to the scribes in, Matt, in John 8, 30, uh, 24. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. Do you believe that Jesus is I am? I am stands for God. He was not just a historical figure. He was not just a prophet, a good man, a man who did miracles. He was God incarnated who came to pay the penalty of your sins. Hallelujah. And to declare freedom Amen. to those who are scared of death. To declare freedom. 
freedom from the slaves of death. Amen. People are scared. The greatest fear in this world is not if you lose your job, if your wife dies, or anything else. It's death. That's the scariest, the, the most fearful thing. People are scared of death. But Jesus took the death. Hallelujah. He died on Calvary. Praise the Lord. And he said, I will give you Hallelujah. eternal life. Amen. He who has the son has eternal life. Mighty Do you Lord. know he is the only way to heaven? Amen. Amen. Don't trust your religion. Don't trust your deeds. Don't trust your goodness. Because all these are taking you only to the grave. Beyond the grave, there is nothing else. If your sins are forgiven, here. Because Hallelujah. the Bible says that the Son of God has Hallelujah. power on earth to Amen. forgive sins. Amen. Once you leave this earth, there is no more forgiveness. It is appointed for men to die once after this judgment. My friend, Amen. God doesn't want to judge you. He doesn't want to condemn you. But he paid the penalty of your sins. Praise the Lord. See, I paid, let's say for this Bible, right? I paid for it. And if you John is taking my Bible without my approval, what is he? He's a thief. He takes something that doesn't belong to him. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ paid the penalty of your sins. Amen. And when you Bloody don't give your sins to Jesus, you are a thief of God. Hallelujah. You need to give to Jesus what he died for. Amen. What he paid for. Amen. He died for your sins. Amen. Your religion will not forgive your sins. Your goodness is not going to forgive your sins. What do you do with Jesus? Speaking about death. Remember when uh, some people wanted to follow Jesus. And uh, a person said, let me go and bury my father. You know what Jesus said to him? Let the dead bury the dead. How do you understand that? Let the dead bury the dead. Well, it was a, a pastor who was officiating a lot of funerals and stuff. But uh, the grave digger who was taking the, the, the dead people to the cemetery, he was not a believer. He refused Jesus. Every sermon, every time he refused Jesus. So one day, a person died. The, they put a coffin in the, in, the, in the cart. And because it was raining, the grave digger asked the pastor to join him next to him. Sit down next to me. And uh, the pastor sit next to the grave digger. And after a while, he said, my friend, I have a really, really confusing question. And it's about your profession. Would you help me? The grave digger said, yes, pastor, what is it? Well, Jesus said in the Bible, let the dead bury the dead. How would you do that? How? And the, the grave digger said, I told you, pastor, that this religion is stupid and the Bible has no sense. No, 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 don't say that. He said, well, how can the dead bury the dead? And the pastor said, let me tell you how. Remember when we took the coffin from the house to put it in a cart and to go to the cemetery? Yes. You remember that the husband and you remember that the children were going over the coffin and crying and calling their mother to come back? And the husband told calling the wife to come back? Remember that? Yes. Did she come back? No. Why? She was dead. She was dead. So the pastor said, now, the dead bury the dead. That means you are dead in your sins and transgressions, and you're taking the dead to the cemetery. My friend, if you don't have Jesus, but you have only a religion, only if you trust in your good deeds, then what do you do with Jesus? Because God never did such a mistake to send his son to die for nothing. One day you'll stand before Jesus. The Bible says every knee will bound, and every time we confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. You will bow before Jesus that day, even if you want it or not. But let me tell you something. Today, he's the Savior. Tomorrow, he will be the judge. Amen. And I pray that at this gathering together, you will consider Jesus. What do you do with Jesus? You might think you have a lot of good deeds. There was a man <coughs> who ended up in heaven. And there was a... There was a sign 
in front of the door of heaven saying, only if you have a thousand points, you can get in. So the angel stopped the man and said, who are you? He said, I was a pastor. You have one point. And I preach to the people every Sunday. You have another point. And I help the widows and the orphans. You have another point. And what else did you do? Well, I was a loving father. You have another point. Four points. But he did a thousand. And the pastor said, only the grace of God can make me enter into the kingdom of God. He said, that's a thousand points. That's a thousand points, my friend. The grace of God is the free gift of God for you. And I encourage you, make the right decision today to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because one day, we might be here together today. But if you don't have Jesus, you will not see heaven. You will not see each other again. And it's your chance. And let me tell you about, the Bible says, now is the day of salvation. It's very urgent for you. And because I experienced that, I, I urge you to do it. I was in downtown Tempe preaching the gospel. And one night, two girls passed by. And I stopped them. I offered them a brochure, a Christian brochure. And one of them took it. And she said, what is this? I said, this is the love, loving message of God for you. And she took the brochure and just threw it in my face and said, we don't need this message. We are lesbians. And they grab each other and kiss each other mouth in mouth. And I said, let me tell you something. God sent me here for you tonight to tell you that he's giving you another chance to repent because he destroyed by fire Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's going to destroy everyone. The lake of fire is prepared for those who reject Jesus and they live in sin. You need to give your life to Jesus. Amen. They turn their back and they say, give us a break with that stupidity. I said after them, if you don't receive Jesus tonight, the judgment of God will fall upon you. 45 minutes later, I finished preaching. I got in my car and on 5th and Ash, on the corner, those ladies holding hands, they were crossing the road in front of me. And I slowed down because it was green color. They were going on red. And when they passed my way and came to the other side, a car came with, a, I don't know, 60, 70 miles an hour and hit both of them. They flew in the air. My head stood up. I seen the judgment of God under my eyes as I told them. And they dropped in their heads on the side. It was hit and run, yeah. a drunk person. Can, you, can we talk about mom now, please? And, Thank you. and I asked the guy, I said, where are you taking them? Can we talk he said, about to the hospital. Tell, I want him to stop talking, please. So I went there next day, praying all night. Lord, give them one more chance. But next day, the doctor told me that they died. My friend, Corona might kill you slowly, or maybe never. But sin is going to kill you. Are you free of sin? Do you live in sin, or you are free to Amen. sin? May God help you. I know these messages are not coming because people think they are in control. People think they are tough. But let me tell you something. When something will break you down like cancer or something, you will cry the name of Jesus. We're not here to condemn you. We're here to tell you that Jesus loves you. Amen. But you must love him in return because Amen. love is not one way. It's a round trip. It's both ways. Amen. Amen. Amen.